Kibber Prime. Hello. Hello. How you doing? Thank you so much for for joining us for Destiny Digest this week. I, I Thank appreciate you for having me. Yeah. Well, thanks for getting up so early <laughs> to to be a part of it. Uh, you live on the opposite side of the world, and it is no small feat, I know, to to get up just specifically for a, a, a little tiny show like this. So I appreciate you uh, hanging out with us tonight. Um, or this morning for you. Uh, <laughs> Technically, it's kind of still live, so. <laughs> it's it's probably still dark out there. It's it's not even yep. dark here yet. Uh, but yeah, so um, Kimber, why don't we start out by, uh, why don't you tell the folks at home, uh, if they don't know who you are, um, who you are, what you do in the space for Destiny 2. Well, hi, I go by Kimber Prime. I am a creator from New Zealand. I do a variety of Destiny content from little guides and cinematic videos on YouTube. I stream helps for people on Twitch if they need stuff with PvE. And I also create a lot of art in the Destiny space. Heck yeah. So, like, yep. talking... Uh, we've we've become... Uh, we've been friendly over the last few years. Uh, <laughs> just, like, I think <laughs> occupying the same kind of creative space, occupying the same kind of, like, helper and guide space. Um, what brought you into Destiny? My Destiny origin story is kind of funny because I had a friend who was a streamer and he wanted to get back into Destiny. This was just before Shadowkeep launched mm -hmm. and he didn't have anyone to play with. All the people he used to play with weren't in the game anymore, so he wanted people to play with. So I said, okay, it was free at the time, you know, getting into the base game for a trial thing. So I was like, I'll give it a go, see if I like it, and then I'll buy the rest of the expansion stuff if it's fun. We played the game. I enjoyed it. He played it one time with his friends, and then he bailed again. <laughs> so he got me addicted to Destiny, and then he walks away. So that is how I got that, into Destiny. What a Destiny <laughs> dealer that guy is. That's such a stereotypical like, story for people who <laughs> started to play that. <laughs> but it's a great one, but you're like, so many people were like, yeah, I played with a friend. I got addicted, but then they bailed. And you're like, oh, I'm so sorry for you. <laughs> I think we played two sessions in total of like an hour each, and then he was gone and he never came back. Oh no. Oh, so many so islands sad. of misfit toys <laughs> make, up, oh, make up the Destiny community. It's so funny. I'm so sorry. Well, I'm glad he did because I love the game now, but yeah. it's still just funny that that's how it started out. I had no intention to play Destiny until that happened. What was yeah. the what was the thing that like that grasps onto you? Like, what made you addicted to it? It's actually interesting, because I just played the Red War intro, the first, like, mission, mm -hmm. where, you know, you find Savala and Kate and, like, Korra. I played that, like, 15 times while I was waiting for my friend to actually get on. I didn't want to progress, because he was going to restart the game as well. Mm -hmm. And I just, like, running that same mission, I just grew to love the characters. With the little bit of time you got to spend with them, I was already, like... I want to know more about these people. I want to know more about this world. What the hell is going on here? <laughs> so, yeah, I kept going. And then I finished, you know, all the Red War and all the other campaigns that were out at the time. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, I want Shadowkeep now because this story is good. And I want to know where it keeps going from here. Heck yeah. I think Seth, I think you found a kindred spirit in, in Seth here <laughs> because she is an advocate for bringing back the Red War campaign yes. into the game. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll, I'll do this short because I've said this before and I'm sorry. I repeat myself. Dan knows this about me. I repeat myself a lot. But I replayed uh, Red War, all of the expansions, to be fair, all of the story um, at the end of Arrivals. So right before Beyond Light Drop and right before the DCV was kind of created. Um, and so I replayed all of the, the expansions, all the stories specifically. And in my opinion, no matter what they do, I don't believe Bungie will be able to create such a fantastic experience as Red Wall was for newcomers to the game, mm -hmm. right? Coming back to it, sure, whatever. New Light is okay. Like it's kind of a quick, like let's let's get you up to speed type of thing. Well, and but even Red then, Wall was such it, a you great... can skip most of it now. Yeah, exactly. Which which is yeah. fair. I don't think it's a bad idea for people that are like, I just want to come back to the game. Like, please let me play. Mm -hmm. That's fair. But um, Red Wall is such a great introduction. Like it's still very confusing in the beginning because you're like, what is happening? But as you progress through that story and the way it is made, it's a great introduction to like the characters, the story, the background, but also the mechanics planets. too. The mechanics, the planets, the destinations, all of that. It was like such a great and well-made in my opinion. And people keep, keep saying like, oh, Forsaken, Forsaken. Story-wise, Forsaken is fantastic. 
in terms of mechanics of that story, it is absolutely bad. I'm so sorry. But having to go to Petra, talking to Spider, going back there, kill somebody, go back to Petra. Like, it's so bad. Whereas in Red Wall, it would be like, okay, we're going to make you go to that planet. You go do a bunch of stuff on that planet. Then you go to another planet and so on and so forth. So it was much better. So I really, really hope that Benji brings it back. But who knows? Yeah. But yeah. yes. I've been actually was... talking to my community about this exact topic. I think literally yeah. last stream we were talking about this as well, about... The new light experience is very much lacking at the moment. The Red mm -hmm. War was oh, like, 100%. love it or hate it, it was a much better introduction for new players <laughs> than what we currently have. Because like, I you know, as you mentioned, you know, Red War, it gives you a taste of what your power can be and then it strips mm -hmm. it away and makes you slowly learn it from the ground up. And along the way, you learn the characters, you learn about different destinations, different activities. Now it's like very short story thing and then it's go grind XP to unlock the next planet because mm -hmm. you can't even go to yep. all the destinations until you grind enough XP. So, well, not a big fan. Yes. And with the skip, I, I like, uh, so I recently did a video on this and it was like, you can, within five minutes, you can load in, at, like if you just do not care about watching the videos, if you, if you just want to create a character and jump in, it takes you less than five minutes to go from the very first mission to uh, skipping all of New Light, then going to the Hall of Champion, or then going to the tower, where you're instantly bumped up to rank two, uh, so that you can explore out to um, the Hall of Champions from into the light, collect the Th Thunder God's chest, and then be done. Like you're at mm. the max power band, uh, which is impressive. But I, it didn't. It's not a very educational experience. <laughs> it's just kind of like. Yeah. If I want to just go do this thing, I can. I can be as powerful as everybody else is. It's a good catch up, um, but it doesn't give you a lot of context for what the game entails. It might be good for like a returning player or yeah. someone, you know. Yeah. But it's not good for like re new players to the game. It's just confusing. Yeah. Um. So going back to uh, kind of what got you into the game, have you you? you make things for the game. You've, you've done cosplay of uh, Savathun. That was like incredibly impressive uh, when, I, when I remember seeing that online. Uh, and, and you also make um, other like dioramas and, and statues and everything uh, for Destiny 2. Have you always done that for games? Um, no, Destiny is actually the first game I ended up making art like this for. I did like, do other art stuff before. Like, I was a bit into cosplay. I made wings and things before then. But I didn't really get into making a lot of art pieces mm -hmm. until I got more into games and into Destiny. Like, sort of Overwatch started it a little bit for me with Mercy, and I'd make, like, a few little Mercy-themed things. Mm -hmm. But then Destiny's, like, the world of Destiny, it just, there were so many things that I loved about it. And it's like, I want to make that. Now I want to make that. Now I want to make that. And there was just like a list of things that I wanted to make. And, you know, one thing leads to another. Now I've got a shelf full of Destiny stuff I've made. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You even, you, uh, before before recording, you were like, hey, do you mind if I bring some stuff over to, to like show uh, to on the, on camera? And like, so this little guy that you have here, like, little it's so cool. <laughs> How long did it take you to make him? Uh, this one took me quite a while because it was the first one. Mm -hmm. I think I built it over like a month mm -hmm. period. And it's like, uh, it's hand sculpted, you know, the moth body. I had to build the wings out of all these little slivers of acrylic. So mm -hmm. it's it's all handmade. Like almost nothing is machined on this except for cutting the acrylic into its designated sizes. So yeah, it, it took quite a while, but the result is definitely worth it. Oh it's yeah, it's beautiful. Very cute little guy. <laughs> yeah, so... That's wonderful. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, how are you finding your experience with Destiny 2 Into the Light? Um, for me, it's definitely been like refreshing to get mm -hmm. back into Destiny more with Into the Light. I kind of took a semi-break for a couple of months before Into the Light dropped. I'd still play it on stream like maybe once a week maximum, but apart from that, I wouldn't really touch the game anymore. Just gotten burnt out from everything, doing the same grind over and over. Into the Light, of course, it's more grinding, but mm -hmm. it's something a bit new again with Onslaught. I've always wanted a Horde mode in Destiny. And while it's not quite what I want, I would have liked a little bit more variety in there, a little bit more like difficult even beyond what mm -hmm. we have for Legend at the moment, like a real 
real challenge to try and get through that it becomes like it's infinite and you can never get to the end very much it yeah. just gets too hard to get to the end that's what i would have loved to reach eventually but this is still really fun i've been enjoying doing on still with my friends with my community and then just getting some of the old weapons back has been mm -hmm. interesting too i used recluse a lot back in the day when i got it. i only had it for a little bit before i got sunset mm -hmm. and i used it so much while it was a thing it's just kind of nice to have it back again and be able to use it Although having to grind out the god rolls taken a while again. <laughs> yeah. How how are you finding the experience of um attuning and grinding out for the god roll versus um craft like getting the the uh getting the blueprints, getting the red borders and then crafting those weapons? Do you feel like it is a more rewarding experience uh grinding on slot or the crafting way i find that the grind is more rewarding than the crafting mm -hmm. crafting is nice it's you know you get the patterns you're done you don't have to worry about that weapon anymore you've got the perfect role you can make as many more as you want you're just done so in like a time where i didn't have much time to play it was nice you know you just ran your raid for example once a week and then you had your pattern after a while but it never really felt rewarding. It felt more like a checklist mm -hmm. than like a fun chase. So having to actually grind the weapon now and having a Truman help you, you know, focus on a specific drop that you want instead of having to fight a loot pool of God knows how many weapons like you have in Dears of Eternity <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's well, it's it's one. quite nice. I still don't have the God Roll Edge Transit. I'm after. I've only gotten shit once so far, to be honest, but mm -hmm. I'm still enjoying the chase. So I'm going to keep chasing that thing until i get what i'm after i've been enjoying my time with it just it, it feels the legend feels challenging uh i think going back to what you were saying earlier about you would rather see it as more of a, a progressive mode with more variety that just keeps going and building and building and building i think something along the lines of like a prison of elders style Prison uh, of Elders meets Haunted Forest, where you got more modifiers if you create yeah. branches. Yeah, that's that sounds great. <laughs> that, that sounds <laughs> like a wonderful time. And it's cool to see Bungie kind of um, going into giving giving us a little bit of the greatest hits of like, hey, here's, here's why you enjoy combat in Destiny 2. Here are these weapons that uh, some of which we've taken away. Uh, because of sunsetting, and we'll get to that in a bit. Or, or here's some of these weapons that we've we've marked as legends that um, we're just giving more perks in the pool, such as hung jury. It's really cool to see them going toward that nostalgia, building on nostalgia, but creating something new out of it. Um, Although we've had enough hung juries, Bungie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, hundred percent agree. Another one, please. <laughs> and another one. And How many have we had at the moment? How many have we had? It's like four five. or five. It's it's five something along those lines. We've calculated. Well, I think it's five without D one. Yeah. So it would be six with D one, something like that. People have calculated <laughs> it. It's like five at this point. It's like, can can we get something else? Please, like, and, please. <laughs> and I get why you I do it know. because like there's there's the models already in the game, like you. You don't have to do much to refresh it up other than give it a scan. So I understand that, but... Okay, but Dan, that applies to every weapon. <laughs> oh, no, I agree. I also I'm agree. <laughs> I agree with these terms. I'm not <laughs> saying... I'm not saying not. Please. It's just there. It's there. It was maybe Get easier... It. <laughs> it was maybe easier what? to do than Kendall Orchid. No, well, I understand why it wouldn't have been Kendall yeah. Orchid, no matter what, because there were already two hand cannons, right? So three would have been too much. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it could have been like I don't know, ringing nail. It could have been another forge weapon, or it could have been any other. Like it could have been a dawn weapon. People mm -hmm. have been asking for dawn weapons for forever, right? So it could have been any of those. Maybe would have been more interesting. I understand the succession. We talked about this in a previous episode. Mm -hmm. I understand the succession. I and understand the forbearance. Those are like oh. Here are these raid weapons that you cannot get other than having the raids. Here's how we're gonna sell our expansions. Mm -hmm. Here. I don't care about that. That's more than understandable. But Hanjuri, Bungie, please. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. <laughs> so, uh, what weapons have you have you received in Onslaught that you don't see leaving your hands anytime soon? 
Um, so far, I did get a decent recluse, which had the Master of Arms and Feeding Frenzy, I believe, mm -hmm. on it, the role, which I have been enjoying using. It's not quite the role I'm after yet, but it's pretty damn close, and I'm having a lot of fun of it. And there's also a Fallen Guild, and I haven't tried it yet, but it comes with some interesting perk combos that I definitely want to try out. Maybe I can try and get a few more as well from Onslaught. And definitely, whenever I finally get my God or Edge Transit, it's never leaving. That mm -hmm. thing is staying permanently. But so far, it's elud it has eluded me. So, got more grinding to do first. How is your community <laughs> finding all of this activity? I'm, I'm assuming that you're helping people with, with Onslaught and mm -hmm. prepping for Pantheon. Oh, yeah, Pantheon's going to be good. But yeah, yeah, Onslaught has been fun. The community's been really enjoying it. They've just been, you know, farming out the waves with me on streams as well. And also just on their own in the Discord. It's just been really fun seeing people excited about an activity in Destiny again. It feels like it's been a while since mm -hmm. that's happened. And it's just fun jumping in of them, sharing their excitement, sharing their heartbreak when you wipe on wave 49 on Legend, you know. <laughs> damn tormentors, dude. <laughs> yep, damn wave 49 tormentors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had, we yeah, it's, had, it's good. We had the bug on Tuesday where... Oh, no. <laughs> but like, it was, it was the closest my buddy Dunes has been to to level 50 and it was i think it was like my friend travis is one of his first times hopping into legend and helping out um but we got to 49 and then the portal didn't open we knew that mm. it was a common bug but we were like well maybe they'll fix it by the time we get done you know, you're like you never know and uh yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah so i don't know if he's still tasted uh if he still hasn't tasted mm -hmm. the victory of that yet but um my heart goes yeah, out. Yeah, I've them. cleared it. I've cleared it twice now. Once just mm -hmm. with some people from my raid team, and then once with just with some uh, friends. One was Destiny to me, and that was quite a fun run as well. <laughs> I will say, I never realized how many enemies there really are in Onslaught mm -hmm. you have to kill because I checked my kills. I was trying out a new Sunbracers build on the Legend run I was helping mm -hmm. with, and I was 20 kills shy of a thousand. So there's a lot of enemies in a run of Onslaught. Heck yeah. Yeah. Um, if there were any pointers for Onslaught, that you would give to like your average blueberry, your average Joe guardian off the street. What would, um, what would some of those be? Shax is supreme. Get those decoys. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing just beats it. Like yeah. tripwires and targets don't seem to compare to Shax at all. Just Shax everywhere. Fill the field of Shax and then you're good. <laughs> agreed. 100% agreed. Yeah. Yeah. And then the other one definitely is have at least one person who's a dedicated defender. Mm -hmm. Because when you get like the the bonus objectives of killing the bombers, getting the mines, if everyone runs off to do those, your ADU is gone in seconds. Yeah. You can't you can't have everyone running off to do those. So dedicate someone to always defending. And they can help from there if it's, you know, around. But don't have everybody run off because I have seen more than one team wipe from everyone just running to an objective. And then Everything else comes from the other side, and it's just gone. I would add to that: have somebody who's kind of dedicated to grabbing the the batteries as well, mm -hmm. because I think they fixed duping though. Yeah, I think they did that in the latest patch. They yeah. they did they fix have duping. Um, both of them on big side. Okay. <laughs> or juggling the two, yeah, that one was nice. Yeah, they fixed they fixed the the duplicating one with the uh, class ability. They fixed that one, but mm -hmm. they also fixed the get another one as you throw one and then pick up a next one. Yeah, yeah. the juggling method. To... Yeah, because if you throw it, you have like a few seconds between throwing and then being able to pick up another one. And I was very sad about that. Well, yeah, it's a shame. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I, just having somebody else to throw the orbs for you while, say, you're, you're defending is so useful and i i played earlier with d flawless and we played just a regular onslaught and we had a blueberry and like i was looking out on the field and there's a whole bunch of batteries out there i was like oh we got to start chucking these in <laughs> they're all going to start disappearing and we're not going to be able to heal anything oh my god <laughs> it was it became it became a problem fairly, fairly quickly um mm -hmm. but yeah that was that was fun uh pantheon coming next week um, yes yeah so what are you what bills are you looking forward to using for pantheon uh what are you expecting out of it outside of just it being a boss rush 
Honestly, I don't really know what builds I'm gonna run outside of what I usually run for helps on those raids mm -hmm. because we don't know what the modifiers that they're gonna add are gonna be. Is it gonna be something really basic like, you know, just surges or whatever? Or is it gonna be something more elaborate like the double, you know, Golgoroth buff that was a glitch? Maybe, mm -hmm. you know, a mechanic-based thing, something? That would be interesting as well. Definitely swap it up. Oh, yeah, I'm just excited in general about Pantheon, but I don't really have any plans. We're just going to go in and wing it, kind of, and see what happens, honestly. Mm -hmm. Heck, yeah. Rad, rad. <laughs> we've been, we've been prepping. You came through the other night uh, while we were prepping to do um, Legit Ribbon. Ribbon. Because I think that that's going to be a thing. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, Contest Ribbon is going to yeah. be interesting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that'll, that's going to be interesting. It's going to be incredibly tough. And... It for me, it had been a while since I hadn't cheesed ribbon, so it was kind How of like, a, you? <laughs> yeah. It, I mean, everybody loves a good gouda. We were talking about this last night. Everybody loves a good True. gouda. You 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 respect the cheese. You you want to be able to consume it as quickly as possible. But uh, with legit ribbon, I actually found that I really enjoyed the mechanics of it again. Just yep. hopping back on the bike. Um, yeah, Most people are scared of Legit Riven because it looks so intimidating, but once yeah. you actually get into it, it's actually just a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's... I, I, and it had been literally years since I'd run it Legit. And uh, I wasn't teaching it Legit because I was like, well, this raid's super long. It doesn't... Uh, it already takes, <laughs> like, four encounters in order to get here. And then we're still not even done. So we'll just cheese it. It'll be fine. You'll get your loot, whatever. But I think from now on, I'm going to be teaching <laughs> the legit version uh, because, yeah, yep. it's a uh, join the legit teachers. It's way better than. Yeah, cheese. yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that's uh, I think that's where I'm at. Um, but yeah, uh, moving from there, uh, we got a little bit of news in the twid this past week regarding a lot of a lot of paradigm shifts uh, mm. in in Destiny 2, namely when it comes to power and unsunsetting weapons um at first glance with these changes what are you most excited for uh i've saved my perfect paradox all the way back from season of dawn <laughs> i'm just excited to bring that thing out again Heck yeah <laughs> yes it's yes. one of my two surviving weapons from the great sun setting i everything else weapon related is gone yeah my poor zenobia d i used for so many divinity runs is dead it's gone it's deleted I missed that rocket. <laughs> Might have to get a new one just for the sake of it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's most of my guns are gone. I did not. I had like a bunch saved, mm -hmm. but then leading into some of the expansions since sunsetting, I needed vault space because you may, I don't know if you know, but I have a bit of a weird collection of my vault and it takes up a lot of space. Yeah. So I, I needed the vault space. <laughs> so they, they got a. <laughs> What's the weird collection? <laughs> I, I have a, a bit of a stack of Memory of Cade Warlock bombs in my vault around... <laughs> Last time I checked, I had like 70 of them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. I, I, never, I never deleted a single one I found. I just hoarded them all until my Twitch chat started begging me to delete them. So I oh, gave them okay. a channel point redemption to delete them. But, oh, so it yeah. became a spite thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, I sort of just <laughs> like collecting things as well. And it's like... They were like, clean your vault, please. And it's like, I'm not going to delete these bombs, no. And then it's like, okay, pay me 50k channel points per bomb you delete. And they <laughs> regularly make me delete them still, even though I put the price stupidly high for this. <laughs> well, that's that's I loyalty like that. for you. Uh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Good thing Dadder never sold my vault. He would have had a heart attack. <laughs> I mean, like, I saw his tweet earlier this week or yesterday where he's like vault cleaning season is for is permanently like over like That's i'm done i'm done yep. doing it. Yes. <laughs> so uh God, godspeed to that man and all the dms that probably came into his box for you said this is garbage um <laughs> even dmg made a tweet about it i yeah. saw oh my god uh it was good content <laughs> while it lasted uh yep. <laughs> so uh with the final shape uh tied into all of this uh we are seeing that power bands will be changing uh they say in the twid the final shape playing with friends will be easier than ever no matter if you play every day haven't played in years or are trying destiny 2 for the first time 
Uh, the players with the highest power level in the fire team will become the power leader, and all other players in the fire team will be brought up to five power below the power leader if their power isn't already higher. Uh, fire team power only affects activity difficulty, and their unadjusted power level will still determine the power of your rewards. Um, mm -hmm. That's a really solid change. I'm very happy that they're implementing this. Yeah, that's a very good change. Yeah. It it almost feels like a PvP change being brought into PvE. True. In, in a way. Um, it's gonna be really nice for like the you know doing things like master raids and stuff mm -hmm. when people have wanted to join in but they just haven't done the, like the grind to get up to the power. Like they know the raid from the normal version and they're good players. They just lack the power to not die constantly on the master. Mm -hmm. So now having them be able to bid their power boosts it makes it way easier to jump into some of the harder content. It makes you less focused on on that grind, on gear mm -hmm. score, and more focused on your actual stats, I think. Yes. Um, as long as you have someone else who can do the grinding, you know? You can't have yeah. a whole team of just doing that. You need to have at least one grinder in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wh one Who's person. a dedicated grinder? <laughs> <laughs> so many ears perked up just then. Uh, so when your power is increased... By fire team power, your adjusted power will take its place. Adjusted power will show up uh, directly above the activity difficulty and the launch button, which is a cool UI change. Um, it seems like they're really knocking it out of the park with UI uh, changes. Over There's one I really like. They didn't mention mm -hmm. that I saw anywhere, but they did show it in one of the like the live streams or the videos that uh, you can see your allies' health as well. In oh, final shape. I did not see that. There's a, there was a circle above a guardian's head in one of the clips, and there was a white line around the circle, and as they were taking damage, the white line was depleting. Oh, that's cool! So they had, cool. A health, they had a health bar. It's like a health circle, technically, but you could see the player's health. That's red! We should, like, <laughs> heck yeah, somebody's taking a note from Helldivers, it, <laughs> it, it seems. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, that's awesome. I didn't even catch that. And it wasn't... That. Yeah, and it's not like a very like like blatant, obvious, obtrusive thing. That's probably why a lot of people also did miss it. But it's mm -hmm. like it differentiated from the enemy health bar. It's not a bar. It's you know, it's a subtle thing on the circle. But if you're looking for your teammate's health, it's available to you now. That's rad. That is super cool. That like another thing. The, the only thing that I caught from that, um, that I haven't seen a lot of people talking about is that uh, there's not a stat block necessarily on the exotic, uh, um on the exotic class items mm. like you're you're allowed to have like those two accessories but at least in the in the footage that they showed so far you weren't it didn't have a stat affiliated with it at all so it doesn't boost your your resilience or anything along those lines um, might be a trade-off for it then yeah yeah um which makes sense because like more power than why why also then give you the extra little bump to resilience? Um, yeah, uh, they said, uh, yeah, then the next big paragraph out of this is removing power limits from legacy gear. Uh, one problem that they encountered when designing, designing fire team power was power limits found on older gear items. You might have noticed that as we, as you read about fire team power, that the adjusted powers shared by the power leader would sidestep the caps on old power limited items, making it impossible to ignore them. After considering the problem space, we came to the decision to remove power limits from all items starting in the final shape. Um, they go on to talk about like we understand that many old power limited items have been dismantled at this point. Uh, and yep. we regret that we have no recovery mechanism for these. But going forward, we intend to reintroduce sources for most of these updated to modern Destiny sandbox standards and added properties such as or origin traits and build crafting perks um, like they did I with the great weapons. Say, yeah. I said this earlier, but I'm mm -hmm. for the for the podcast. Vindication. <laughs> <laughs> Vindication. I'm wondering. I'm wondering if my zero power damage travelers chosen will get a power boost too. Of this. <laughs> oh, I Bring hope it. Not though. Please, no. Bring don't it. touch these. I still have that too. I have all I the have armor two sets. Of them, yeah. I have all the armor sets, and I still have that one uh, traveler's chosen weapon that can give me like go down to like 
900 level or something like that. I can't remember. But I, please don't touch those. I will be so sad if they get a power level now. <laughs> What? Yeah, I kept my damage travelers chosen, and I have my hunters, um, like white starter gear is still from Red yes. War, but not my other two classes. I wonder if they are mm. gonna affect armor. They don't mention armor. They just talk about um weapons, really. Yeah. Because my hunter is currently running a pair of uh, really old Orpheus rigs, which does go up to light, but all the perks are dead on it, so I need to get a new pair. At some point. <laughs> <laughs> it's a year one set of Orpheus rigs, and it has no perks on it because they got rid of them all on the old armor. Oh my oh, god. Oh no. Yeah. Oh, the solstice yeah, gear too. Like, Bungie, can we please yes. get more armor that you can pick the glow color? Because I still have my old solstice gear. You can just pick whatever color you want on it. Yeah. But it's also, you can't get it up to power because it's locked. I uh. remember that too. I'm very happy though that for the weapons, they are bringing them back and like bring a way to farm them mm -hmm. again mm -hmm. and bringing like perks on them. Because like, I'm vindicated, but I also know that if I can get them in a new and a new version with possibly like better perks or new perks, hopefully better perks, but also origin traits. The ones that I still have in my vault will be kind of obsolete. Be they'll be like obsolete. So I'm more than happy to delete them then when I get a new one. <laughs> yeah, based on the trailer, Perfect Paradox is one of the things coming back because there was a Guardian hole in that in one of the media things for Final Shape. So my Perfect yeah. Paradox might be getting replaced at some point. <laughs> Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing like where they plug those in at, like because I I don't see them returning all of the encounters. That no, it'll be loophole. It'll be you know what? Too many yeah. guns. <laughs> yeah, there's there's of eternity. There's of eternity oh, and no. onslaught are kind of perfect for that. <laughs> Dears does not need more weapons though. It's already got too many. I know. No, there. I agree with you. I agree with you. It does not need more stuff. So does or it give just... us a way to focus them or something? Yeah. Well, yeah. I think attunement is kind of is kind of interesting, right? It 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 works kind of the same way that your um, the attunement on your ghost works for armor. Mm -hmm. In that, like it it focuses on like a certain stat, whereas with the attunement in in the Hall of Champions, you're attuning for a certain weapon to drop more often. Do you see them doing more of that for? gear going forward i hope they do because it still keeps in the excitement of the chase and the grind but it also actually lets you get the weapon drop you want you know it's not like trying to find a needle in a haystack and then apparently there's another you know smaller thing you got to find in because it's two levels of rng you have mm -hmm. to deal with getting the weapon you want and getting the role you want if you can like remove the rng of one of those steps a bit that makes the grind a lot more enjoyable and less frustrating yeah. Um, with this, uh, there's a whole thread by Josh Kalinsky that'll probably end up linking uh, to this episode in the uh, in the show notes. Um, but it talks about all the decision making going into uh, uh, sunrising <laughs> is what is what they're calling it. Um, and it says. Uh, at the end of the day, the ability to play with others is an essential part of the DNA of Destiny, and these power changes look to make playing Destiny with others easier than ever before. So they're they're really pandering to the people who are returning to the game. I feel with that with this move overall, um, I didn't. They seem have... to have a like the greatest focus on returning players, considering mm -hmm. the new light experience is still shit at the moment. Yeah, so I, they do need to look at the you know, coming in players a bit too, in my opinion. They've been doing a lot of great stuff for coming back players, but mm -hmm. it seems like the new players haven't gotten that much love lately. Agreed. Um, With the power bands, so they're changing... Uh, we're removing, improving power bands to further lower the barrier to entry. In the final shape, the soft cap will only require 40 power f to reach, down from the usually 150. This change should allow New Lights enough time to get familiar with the core of Destiny 2's gear power system before stepping into the broader game without holding them back. They can also achieve the soft cap by playing through the entire difficult, either difficulty of the Final Shape campaign, and if you complete it on Legend, you'll be awarded with the entire gear set at 1960 power, so 20 into the powerful band, uh, giving you a great head start towards uh, getting raid ready for contest mode, which is 1965 power. 
Yeah, they did answer one of the questions I had of that, because they said when you finish the campaign, but they also said the campaign doesn't finish till after the raid. So I was like, do we even get the gear before the yeah. raid? But luckily that post confirmed it then. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what are your thoughts on the on the raid dropping like three days after? It's definitely interesting. It caused our team a bit of a kerfuffle because it's like everyone was expecting it in the second week and yeah. getting time off on a different week was a bit of a challenge. I don't mind it in terms of, you know, my personal position because I have very flexible work. I can take the time off. Mm. I can just grind my butt off those couple of days. I know not everyone can. So, like, the entry gate for this new raid is going to be a lot tighter for people. Because mm -hmm. if you can't grind, if you can't finish the campaign, you don't have the power level to go in there for the contest raid. But also, there was one other thing about it. Oh, yeah. With everything new that's coming out, we have Prismatic, we have the exotic class items, we have the campaign to finish. We won't have time to really do a lot of build crafting. It's going right. to be a lot of just going in and figuring it out as you go. Because there's just no time. It's... Like, what was the last time they released a raid, like, this short? Like, I know Garden was pretty quick after Shadowkeep's release. I think with my chat, they said the last time it released, like, three days after Reverend. was, like, King's Fall, right? That, but also... D1 um, or D2? Like, D1. Last wasn't Garden, was like, within the first week as well? I just remember Garden being really early on. Somebody, somebody who's listening right now is like, guys, it was this one, and they're just shaking their head. <laughs> they're going nuts. Last wish, last wish was also really close. Yeah. Yeah, last wish was tight. This is like a last wish situation again of how little time you have. Yeah, it's almost like they Honest, don't want you to catch a breath. I honestly, I want this raid to be last wish because I wasn't here for last wish, mm -hmm. like doing that raid, and I loved watching back the videos of the day one. The last wish was also my very first raid I ever ran in Destiny, so it's mm -hmm. a little bit special to me as well. But yeah, I'm just I'm sad I wasn't there for the day one, even though I would have probably sucked because I would have been very much new to the game at that point. Right. But yeah, it's it's just such a cool raid. How tight it was, how you know tense it was watching the teams try and finish, mm -hmm. and what two teams finished, and then Dado's team was two minutes late. It was yeah. so close. <laughs> just the heartbreak is oh no. Twenty four oh two. 2402, forever remember. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. hope it's, like, really difficult this time around again. Because, mm -hmm. like, Ron Ron was a bit of a chiller raid that we had as, like, the latest new raid that they released. Yeah. So I'd, I'd love to get, like, a really hard challenge this time. Like, make me struggle for this clear. Make me suffer. I want it. Mm-hmm. I know... I know um, Vow was also, like, a pretty tough one. That on was day fun. Two, day one teams, but yeah, it's uh, I the one downside of that was the error codes. The mm -hmm. rest of that was great. Yeah, that was I, a struggle for people. Hopefully, this doesn't happen this time. Yeah, we got error coded as we were opening the last door on exhibition <sighs> on day one. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> like literally, the door was opening, and then it's like, nope, you gotta go again. <laughs> oh <sighs> god, that's awful. Um, I think um. I'm glad that they're they're keeping the standard of 48 hours for the day yes. one. Yes. That it actually gives a lot of people just to g get to the power mm -hmm. <laughs> while contest mode is going. <laughs> if they if they want to like a sh if they have need a shorter window or have time for that shorter window, um, that seems interesting to me. Uh, a c another couple of the changes here. So one more thing, just before yeah. before we move on from that, just with the contest mode being forty eight hours, because I know some people hate it. It's like mm -hmm. you know, all oh, the emblems should be more exclusive, but it's still gonna be hard. It's still a contest mode mm -hmm. raid. It's not a walk in the park. You still need to fight to earn your emblem. And forty eight hours, except for the true gremlins like us that won't stop raiding until we get that first clear, it's a lot healthier because mm -hmm. then you can take yes. breaks. You have the time. So, because, like, staying up for, like, you know, 24 hours in one go because teams are struggling to get their clear, mm -hmm. it's not good for you. I do it. I know. But it, it's not good for you. Don't do as I do. It's bad. Don't. But yeah. it's, like, for the casuals that, you know, do have the teams that can clear the raid, they have more time. And they can take more breaks. They can have a nap. They can have some food. It's not like you have to sit down and grind for the 24 because it's so tough and you don't have the time to clear it otherwise. It's just... It's just better for people. Mm -hmm. And more people get a chance to compete to compete too now because we have two days. If you can't play the first day, you still have the second. So it's yeah. just in general, I, I don't really see anything bad about it being 48 except for 
people complaining about emblem exclusivity. For the rest, it's all amazing. Yeah. The for the Ron run, Asefa and I <clears throat> both did we took full advantage of that forty eight hours. Uh <laughs> yeah. We yeah, we just sleep needed to happen, man. It just wasn't gonna come together any other way. Um one thing that I think is interesting that they're introducing with the final shape is uh account wide power. So mm -hmm. if if you have one character that is like, let's say they're at the 1960 uh, and you run your other characters through, their drops will be higher and more closely, like uh, it says starting in, the, uh, uh, starting in the final shape, the gear rewards you earn on any character will drop with a power level relative to the highest power character on your account. So level up the power of your hunter and when you switch over to Titan and Warlock, their gear will, uh, the gear that you earn will be around your hunter's level, which is super neat. It actually, it solves the issue of infusing. Back in D1, they had the three separate infusing materials for all the classes. Mm -hmm. And uh, then they combined it all. And then they said, hey, you know what? This was toward the end of, of Destiny 1. I want to say it was introduced in the Rise of Iron. Somebody else is going to correct me on the internet, I know. Um, <laughs> but... They they took all those materials, combined them in the one, and were like, okay, now if you have if your hunter is max power and has max power gear, you can use that gear to infuse into your Titan set and everything. This kind of feels like a relative step without needing to infuse gear in. Um, I think that that's going to possibly play a part in a lot of day one teams as well. Just if something's not working, <laughs> and you're like. <laughs> Well, we need we need one extra warlock or something like that. I could see that that coming into play. Also, just for preparing for the raid too, because usually you would you know play your other two characters first that weren't going to be your main, and then you'd right. move the guns over, and then you know grind new armor on that character. It's a little bit easier in that regards as well. And I don't have to keep moving over stuff and infusing gear. You can just play other characters one after the other, and then yeah. you'll get the drops you need. It really feels like a lot of the changes that they're making now. I mean, we we've we've already had like speculation uh, about Destiny Three, <laughs> like coming around the, the pike or whatever they're going to call it. Um, we've had the uh, be coming from Destiny One. They're making a lot of quality of life changes that were kind of around like equitable to end of life for Destiny One. Um, in Destiny 2 now and it's it's funny to kind of see it after going through it once before and being like god I really hope that they take a lot of these types of changes and move them over to the next iteration I hope that they're like developing in tandem these systems for that next thing I don't know if we'll see that but it's a mm. uh, it's a hope of mine always the optimist I don't know how I feel about Destiny 3, to be honest. Yeah. I'm kind of just waiting to see if it's going to actually be a thing or not before yeah. I really, you know, judge it. <laughs> well, you got to beat the witness first. And yeah. <laughs> like to see, to even know possibly, maybe, about what uh, they're talking about or what if there's even going to be one. Um well, there was another big arrow after, you know, the final shape on that timeline they showed us. So we don't know what the next big arrow is going to be. Yeah. That's very true. And we have all the stories or the episodes uh, coming down the pike, too. The episodes were, like, based on each of, like, our allies and things from mm -hmm. what I gathered. So if that is true, it, it does kind of feel like a wrapping up if it's going to be one, you know, for each of them to finish mm -hmm. off their stories. So I kind of hope Destiny 2 doesn't end because I do really like the game as it is. I know Destiny 3 has a lot of room in for improvements yeah. if it does come out, but it's also, like... I've grown to love the characters. I love, you know, my my guardian. I love, you know, the things I have in this game. So having to leave it all behind would kind of suck. Yeah, that's if you have to leave it all behind, though. Like, can we take our transmog and our emblems with us, please? That'd be nice. <laughs> I want my NFTs, please. <laughs> I earned my movie of the week. So I want to take it with me, please. <laughs> yeah, that would be awesome. Uh, yeah, I'm looking back through here. Like, 
artifact bonus power is going to be changing a little bit. It seems like we're still going to be able to like XP grind to get extra at, or added artifact power um, in Final Shape, which is kind of a bummer. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. I've I know it's something where I don't I don't like necessarily like farming for that stuff every expansion, but it's almost become Neither. like a ritualistic. Uh, necessity. It's part of it, yeah. yeah. It's part of it now. Yeah. Um, but we also have... Um, they talk about activity power now, too. So, um, power-enabled activities, by comparison, are are where you st grow stronger by improving your power. These each have an activity power cap or a power level at which you have achieved maximum effectiveness. R basically, they're just saying uh, the quiet part loud now, and they're like, you have to be this tall in order to ride. <laughs> this this activity uh and really pushing pushing for that and with fire team scores or fire team uh uh power the way that it's going to act seems like it'll be uh way more accessible on a myriad of different activities um as somebody who helps mm -hmm. in the community uh where do you land on all this i think it's good personally that you know that they are introducing more ways to more easily get the power you'd actually need to enter these activities mm -hmm. with the, as you mentioned, the fire team power level. So as long as I grind my butt off and, you know, spend my time no life in destiny, as a lot of content creators tend to mm -hmm. do, then, you know, I can help people go through there. And I'm guessing a lot of other creators will be doing the same. They will make sure that their power is high enough so that if other people want to jump in, there'll be no barrier. Even if the people don't have the time to get those levels they need, Although, as mentioned, it is also easier to get the levels from the sounds of it once mm -hmm. Final Shape drops. So that'll also be nice. Yeah. Um, leaving the Twid uh, information. Uh, Goodbye, Twid. <laughs> Goodbye, Twid. <laughs> nice knowing you. Uh, what, what else in, in the Final Shape are you looking forward to before, before we wrap up here? Personally, the environment and the enemies is what mm -hmm. I'm the most excited about. Oh, yeah. The, because the... the environments, there's there's so much variety, and it's all visually gorgeous from what we've seen mm -hmm. in the various trailers and the podcasts and everything they've shown. And then also just the enemies. I don't know if you've seen it, but I have a bit of a habit of breaking AI on enemies. I did a whole <laughs> series on it of, of taming enemies. Like, I would just sit around with Thrall hanging around. I stood on Sabathun's face and she let me. I've, <laughs> I've done a lot of random shit of enemies in Destiny. I'm excited to see what these new ones can do because the flyers seem like they'd be a pain in the butt to oh, deal yeah. with. So I'm, I'm really curious what we can do with those guys. Well, in the husk... <laughs> Because they released a whole suite of profiles on the different enemy types that we'll be facing with the mm -hmm. dread, or uh, yeah, the dread, right? The, the dread, dread, yeah. The dread. I almost called them the grim, but that's the flyer. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's the fly boy. Yeah, um, the husks seem. They they spoke about them as very as very threatening in the uh, in the video, and I was like. Okay, yeah, and I can see how like two of them teaming up on you, that would be kind of scary. And then in the character, in the in the profile one for the husk itself, they I think they had like three or four in a room. <laughs> it was just terrifying. Everything lunging at you and hacking. Uh, mm -hmm. Which specific enemy type do you feel is going to be the most deadly of all of them? I don't remember its name, but I'm I'm kind of scared of the strand guy they were showing. Yeah. The strand guy seems pretty scary. <laughs> the big uh rolk like one or the 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 smaller one. The smaller one? Yeah, the one which was suspending people in one of the things they showed. Yeah, I can't remember what they named that guy. I can't remember what he's cool either, but that one looks cool scary. Weaver? Weaver, that sounds about right. I think that's what it is. I could be wrong. It matches the character, the name. Yeah. It was that video. It was yeah. and something else with it. Yeah. yeah that one's the scariest, and I'm the most interested in the little flying guys, though, because they seem <laughs> really cool. In the Grim, they seem like they would sound like, yeah! When it, <laughs> I don't know why. It's just how I picture them in my head. Hey, Bungie, you have a voice actor for those guys now? Hire him, please. <laughs> I need this in the game. 
<laughs> but yeah, I like I can see where you're coming from with like the just it looks so surreal. All yes. the different locations. Uh especially It's built like, from memories, they yeah. said, right? Yeah. And the hands. Just hands everywhere. Reminds me of the Warlock's uh, Controverse Hold ornament they got yeah. at some point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, with all the hands up on the arms. Just the hands yeah. going up the arms. <laughs> just, just crazy. It's visually very beautiful. There was also one scene with the hands where it was like dragging a guardian down in one of the earliest reveal trailers. That mm -hmm. was kind of spooky. Yeah. Oh, man. It, I, yeah. I, I like it when they get really grim dark. I think Presage, they get kind of like... Lovecrafty and grim dark, and and that's kind of like the lane where I'm like, all right, Destiny's kind of fire in here. <laughs> so, yeah, that mission was amazing, and I hope this whole expansion is, is like similar theme to it, same feel of like you know you hear a noise and it's like what's that? Yeah, <laughs> you know it's like like a horror movie, but it's you know it's Destiny, but it's scary somehow. Oh god, yeah, that would be, get the heart rate up. I would love to yeah, see make that. it spooky, yeah. make it spooky, make it gorgeous. <laughs> well, um, any any parting thoughts before we say uh, goodbye here today? Um, I think we've pretty much covered all the things I was interested in talking about as yeah. well. Although, uh, definitely very excited for Pantheon coming mm -hmm. out very soon. That's going to be a good time. Who all's on your team for Pantheon? Um, it's just a bunch of my friends from around the world. I have one other other Kiwi with me, so we got mm -hmm. at least two people from our little corner of the world. <laughs> and then everyone else is over in the U.S. and the U.K. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> can I give can I give can I give a little shout out to my team? Absolutely, absolutely. You're here. Feel free to. Yeah. Well then, uh, Panda, Alan, Demise, Ali, and Megakin. I'll see you all at reset. <laughs> Heck yeah. Good luck out there. Um, thank you. Yeah, thank you for spending your morning with us uh, today. Uh, Thanks for having me. It was fun. Absolutely, it was it was great. Where can people find you on the internet? Uh, I'm on most social media platforms. Although my main one that I use is Twitter, aka X. You can also find me on YouTube and Twitch, as well as TikTok. I go by Kimber Prime on most platforms. You can also find me under the name Ravenheart Creations, which is my art name. So look up either of those two and you should be able to find me pretty much anywhere. 